You're listening to the In Focus Interview Show, brought to you by Photofocus.com, an online publication filled with education and inspiration for visual storytellers. This episode is made possible by our partners Loom Cube, the world's most versatile light, and Robo, a smart storage solution. Now, here's your host, Vanelli. Hello and welcome. I'm Vanelli. Now, I'm here in Las Vegas at Photoshop World, and actually, we're wrapping up. Now, Photoshop World's a gathering of photographers, graphic artists, Lightroom lovers, and of course, Photoshop users from all over the world. Now, we come together for three days of accelerated learning. Now, my guest here is a teacher, photographer, and a great guy, Greg Kusimi. How you doing, Greg? Doing well. It's a pleasure. Now, yeah. Ray Ray is my good friend, which you've all seen him before, which is your dad. Yeah. And we introduced, he met me, or I met you when I was in Seattle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it was neat because, of course, Ray and I have been friends for many years, and you've seen him at Photoshop World all the time. You were there when in Seattle when I met you. You were doing a charity event mm -hmm. for your community. What was yeah. that? Do you remember? Um, that back then, I believe it was Healthy Families, where we had just got done serving about 700 families, giving them backpacks, school supplies, and um, just kind of like help, having them celebrate healthy families and healthy lifestyles. Great. And now, and with that, you actually, you work with a group of um, children and adults, correct? Correct. Yeah. So I work with uh, low-income refugee um, and immigrant families. So right now, for our photography stuff, at least it's middle school and high schoolers. But I also work with parents right now as well. Now, what refugees do you work with right now? Right now, we have a lot from East Africa. So that's Somalia, Eritrea, Ethiopia, um, and some Southeast Asian countries as well. But those are usually immigrants. Yeah. Gotcha. So and I was so moved by it and yeah. your uh, selfishless behavior to help people. So I asked you if you wanted to go to Photoshop World. Yeah. Your first so comment. Excited. But your first comment was, yeah, no, I really can't afford it. Teacher salary at all. And yeah. I said, look, I'm going to talk to the team over at Kelby. Then we got you a ticket. Yeah. And that was awesome. Yeah. So you got to come. Yeah. Now, what's really cool about this is first you're going to share with everyone your experience that you had. Mm -hmm. And then how as a teacher, you're going to bring that back to your classroom. Yeah. So let's talk about so what, what were some of the classes you yeah. attended? So some of the, the main focus of my tracks were um, around photography and just some of the, the basics of like, oh, hey, there's some new tricks that you should really keep in mind. And what I actually really wanted to do was look at how these instructors were teaching and feed off of their energy and their style. Um, and so I was just, whether it be, you know, one flash tricks, whether it be, um, you know, just how to pose people better or um, Lightroom, new methodologies for, you know. Um, so for those athletes. people yeah. that are not teachers or educators, a lot of times educators, it doesn't matter what they're teaching. It could be basket weaving. Yeah. <laughs> it could be how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm -hmm. As educators, we don't teach, we don't watch what you're teaching, but how you're teaching it. Exactly. Right? And how we can pull that into what we do. Yes. So let's talk about the the one light. Did you take Kelby's class? Yeah, I took Kelby's and also, um, oh man, I'm blanking out on his name. He's from the Netherlands. Okay, Frank um, Dorhoff. Yeah, exactly. Huge yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. larger than light personality. Exactly. Great yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about um, Frank. What did you learn in Frank's class? Frank's class was about just using uh, one flash, but also how to use that as a supplement, um, whether it be... Um, using uh, continuous light, but also how do you use gels and flash it into the lens to create some really great lens flares, um, and also how to work with models to pose them, make them feel comfortable. And so that was huge because that was something that I have a lot of inexperience with. You know, working with models, it can be very expensive, but also, um, you know, you want. I feel most comfortable when I shoot when I know someone as well, right? And of course, that's the same with the model. You know, it's like, how do you build that rapport and relationship? Great. Um, to do so, so Frank taught, which was great. Mm -hmm. If you you can mix different light sources together. Yeah. So if you have continuous light, oh, yeah. why not throw a little flash yeah. with a with a gel to do something in the background? Exactly. And the same concept applies for outdoor balancing ambient light outdoors yeah. with a little fill flash or adding it into your seat. So that was one. Yeah. So that's one tip. Second tip is how to work with models. Mm -hmm. Now, afterwards, because we wrapped up with Photoshop World, your father, yourself, myself, yeah. and Kim. Kim is phenomenal. 
but she's like my right hand when it comes to organizing shoots. You've seen her. Yes. You know, yeah. That, that woman That's can great. walk into a Goodwill or any thrift yeah. stores and just whip out this incredible outfit for yeah. a model. Yeah. Right? So Kim was there helping out. Your dad had a little concept when we were working with the model. Mm -hmm. Did you hear how I was working with her? Yeah. Just like really talking with her, um, you know, using a tripod to set up shots. Even if you don't think you need a tripod, hey, you should use a tripod. Because yeah, we were doing conceptual work. Yeah. We were doing yeah. something where she was looking into a mirror and she was, she's a former, well, she is an athlete. Yeah. So she's an athlete. And once I knew that, do you hear how I got into her head? Yeah. Is it, you're, you're in the locker room by yourself. You're about to go out and perform. Mm -hmm. Think of that self-talk. And she knew, yeah. all athletes know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, here I am. On the outside, I look confident. On the outside, people are like, oh, I don't want to mess with you. Yeah. But on the inside, you're still thinking, oh, God. Using oh. that story art to convey emotion and have the model go through this kind of like a storytelling process so they can like, you know, um, bring that to their physical exactly. self. And then That's they feel cool. comfortable. So your father was focusing on capturing the creativity of the shot. Mm -hmm. My job as a technical side was to get the model, give your father that reaction. Yeah. And then we wanted to do a little extra where the image in the mirror was one pose. Yeah. And then the actual image of her looking into the mirror was something totally different. Yeah. So there was that, the inner voice, you know, talking right. to your inner voice. Yeah. And your father nailed those shots really well. Yeah. So that, that, that was part of what you were working with, with Frank teaching how to pull that out of a model and get comfortable with them. Yeah, absolutely. So, and as you can tell you were with us for almost a week. Yep. I'm a very shy and quiet person. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm very awkward when I walk into a room. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. there's, there's, different types of, there's different types of photographers. Yeah. You know, some make it happen, some let it happen. Mm -hmm. Some feel like, no, I want to make this shot happen. Right. And then others are like, I'm going to look back and let them evolve and mm -hmm. let them you know, and there's nothing wrong it's you just have to find your yeah style and to adapt yeah all right so let's talk about kelby mm -hmm. what did you what did you learn on his class so his was like um a one flash trick kind of like trip uh tips and techniques and so he said here's some great starter you know settings and then work around with that um you know and then also tips for outside um, for when you have like a less controlled uh, setting. I thought that was great, but I also wanted to try and find something that, I mean, for me especially, it's like when we are teaching a class of, you know, 30 middle, middle school and high school students, that puts a constraint on our budget. So it's like, that's why it really gravitated me towards this class. It was like, okay, yeah, with a single flash, I could get like 30 flashes easy. If it was like, a, you know, a four flash or multi-light setup. setup, right? It's like, oh, man, that just explodes. And then and here's what's cool. Right? Yeah. Combine what Frank was talking about. Uh -huh. So let's go outside. Let's balance ambient light. Oh, now we have one flash. Yeah. And now you have, let's see, the light or the sun backlighting the subject here. Yeah. So there's one light. So you exactly. have to buy a flash for that. Two, you have somebody holding a reflector, mm -hmm. mounting a little fill light. That's two. Right. And now you have the actual flash itself. Exactly. I mean, yeah. either through a softbox now, there's your three light setup. Exactly. And the On cost a minimal is budget. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. So that's great. So do you see how Photoshop World helps you take the creativity inside of you? Yes. And yeah. mix and match it. Yeah. All right. So what about Lightroom classes? You said you took those? Yeah. So that one was with Terry. And so that <laughs> one was Terry uh, White. Terry White. Yeah. And that was great. That one was actually just kind of like, um, I believe it was like, um, 60 tips in 60 minutes or something like that. I can't remember the exact title, but so he, that one was mainly actually just about workflow and some of like the backup settings and stuff like that. So that was just really great for me personally, where I was like, okay, cool. I, this is something I need to know. Just make sure exactly. that the work is saved properly. Yeah, and, God forbid. Could you imagine yeah. your kids kill themselves doing all these incredible shots and then all of a sudden you lose them? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you look like the bad guy. Exactly. And so that was huge too because, you know, we're putting a lot of the students' work on USB sticks and SD cards and just there's multiple, you know, save spots. And so, you know, we really want to make sure that um, just how the directory is and for the computer, the stuff gets saved properly. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. So that, that's great. So yeah. su suggestion on that with multiple people. Mm -hmm. um, my suggestion, because we, we talk click for kids yeah. in the Bavaria County school system. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, a friend, a good friend of mine, Tony Ramirez, uh, we got together and we created, at first we were going to call it 
Nikon for kids. Oh, cool. But we couldn't get the funding from Nikon. Oh, okay. Even though we used all Nikon cameras, <laughs> right. we said, you know what? Sorry, <laughs> you didn't, you, know, you weren't able to um, sponsor it. So we went to yeah. Click for Kids. Nice. And the same concept, what we did there, uh, Russell Brown, the head of a, a part of the Adobe, oh, yeah. he actually, back when Lightroom and Photoshop were individual products, mm -hmm. and you had a, um, Instead of a subscription base, you actually bought the bought program. box. Yeah, he got Adobe to donate for the for a thirty for a Mac Lab of thirty. Wow! And I can't thank Russell Brown enough. It's been years and years I've known Russell, and he just came out and just here. I was thinking one or two copies, and he yeah. just was able to explode. And here we'll we'll, we'll take the whole lab. Awesome. So for us, each child, we had one Lightroom catalog. Oh wow! But each child had their own folder. Yeah. Inside that catalog. And that was stored on the master computer. Because Lightroom's not a network. Yeah. You know, you can you can access it over the network, but you can't access it at the same time. Gotcha. Not to mention the fact, what if the kids were messing around with each other, deleting each other's yep. exactly. So exactly. therefore, that was set on Tony's machine, and each of the children had a directory where they uploaded their images. Cool. And then it appeared in Lightroom. So we just do file sync, right? And it would just sync all the images in, awesome. and then children could work on projects. Yeah. You know, once we they, they dumped them to their individual machines, right? You know, they, they played yeah. the one they were done. Then they were able Uploaded. to export them. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. it's kind of a neat. Now, wow, now, now that in full disclosure, you know, I, I work with Skylum, mm -hmm. so Luminar is my go-to instead of Lightroom. Mm -hmm. So in Luminar, what's really cool is the directory, once you create that directory yeah. inside Luminar, then the it synchronizes both ways. That's you delete really something, cool. you delete something on your computer, it gets, it gets deleted inside Luminar. You delete it in Luminar, it gets deleted on your computer. So what you see in Luminar is your file structure all the way through. And Very that exactly. was the missing piece we needed to yeah. make all of this work flawlessly. Yeah, the workflow. So, exactly. And keep in mind, yes, I work for Skylum, so I I, I don't use that, that be oh, he's prejudiced towards Skylum right. because he works there. <laughs> I use Lightroom in the beginning to organize my images, but then I use the bulk of my editing yeah. and my uh, synchronizing, I use strictly with Luminar. Very so cool. that's just another... Yeah. Something in the future you can look into. Absolutely. Uh, well, we could talk with Skylum about that. Yeah. Because it's good for five. One license is good for five computers. Okay. Yeah. That's, so so yeah. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. Sure. But that's great. So now as an educator, what are some things you can bring back to the kids? Okay. So first off, I mean, as you had mentioned, right, as an educator, you often look at other educators just to see how they teach, right, and how they present their material. And that was one of the things immediately I was going, okay, I love how they're able to merge their charisma. And you, obviously, they practice their material, which is always, you know, great. And not sometimes you can't always do that. Uh, but having the slides and a mix of slides, but also video yes. is, was great. And I think, what is so great about Photoshop World is, sure, online, there's a lot of video tutorials and stuff and, and resources available, which is great for its own reason. You can you know, replay it and stuff like that. But having the charisma of a teacher in person is so fantastic. And to be able to ask questions before, after, or maybe sometimes during even to be like, oh, hey, could you go back and like explain that a little bit is so great. Um, because some of the tangents were actually some of the most in informational, actually. Um, so that and actually the, the, the one flash techniques was really, really fabulous because, yeah, just because knowing that, um, you know, having Scott there to be able to ask questions about, okay, well, what do you think about different, um, sync flashes or TTL? Like, should we, um, uh, where the drawbacks of different op options was really awesome. Yeah. You yeah. Know, you know, because I taught the class, first of all, with Scott, I think my favorite <laughs> during his slide presentation he was talking about his football uh -huh. photos. photos. Yeah. Sometimes you got to catch that shot that nobody catches. And there's a guy catching the ball. He goes, for example, a New York Giant catching the football. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> yeah. I was like, where's he heading with that? And that's where the charisma Exactly, yeah. Um, now, yeah. You know, I taught the class three, two, one backup. Uh -huh. You know, how to back up and secure your, your data. Yeah. So while I was in the elevator, I'm exhausted. You've saw what I've gone through. Yeah. I'm heading back to my room. I'm, I'm on the 21st floor. 
Gentleman walks in. Oh my God, Vanelli, I have a question about the backup backups. solution. Yeah. So I, I drove, rode down with him in the uh -huh. elevator. He got to the lobby. He still had questions. <laughs> we rode back up. <laughs> yeah. Got to the 21st floor. One more question. Went all the way back down to the lobby. I go, is there any more? No, no, I'm good for now. Thank you. And then I rode back up again. And someone said, why don't you just get off the elevator? Mm. And you know, I would love to. Yeah. But if I did, you know that there's going to be more than one person asking right. questions. So right. as educators, what we do, and your dad's done this with us many times, is we'll sit in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, yeah. you've seen it. Yeah. People swarm, swarm. around. <laughs> and we start answering questions. And then... Yeah. I will say, hey, I have no problem answering any questions, but we're going to record this as a video. Yeah. Because yeah. one person has a question, great. Now we can take this video, like this video here, yeah. and spread it out to, we have like three, three million viewers right. at PhotoFocus. Yeah. And then Skylum has, God, millions and millions of people. Yeah. So your little interview here is helping out other educators all over the world. For sure. You're attending Photoshop World, you know, yeah. thinking, I know you're thinking, oh, God, I feel selfish. This was for me. In reality, look what it's doing yes. for all yeah. the other people out yeah. there. You know, because I can't afford to send everyone to Photoshop World. Mm -hmm. However, we can give the experience to others, and that's what you just did. Yeah. yeah. So thank great. you for that. No worries. Yeah, it was great. That was something where I was, like, super thankful to come and learn about, not only just about building up my own skills, but be able to make sure that I felt confident enough to teach others when I get exactly. back and share the message. And the network. Yeah. You did yeah. a great job networking with yeah. a lot of people. Exactly, now, yeah. It sounds like we had a whole lot of work, and we did. We did do a whole lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> we also had a lot of fun. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> Midnight Madness. Yes. You had a yeah. great time there. <laughs> um, great time for the After Hours Party. Yeah. You got to hear Scott Kelby and his band play. Yep. Yeah, that He's was a great. great. Voice, yeah. He? That was so great. I was like... I forget that he has he's a man of many talents and like uh, I just remember like uh, even when the event is officially over they're still jamming out there and <laughs> enjoying themselves it's like oh man yeah so that was time. cool so again Photoshop World is a great event to to attend just I mean other conferences also there's a lot of conferences that you can attend even local conferences yeah the key is network build connections with each other and and just pay close attention. Not to just what is being taught, mm -hmm. but how it's being taught. And then you can teach yourself, yeah. go back, and of course, follow up. Mm -hmm. Follow up with the people you've met. Yes, yeah. Even if it's just a little simple, hey, thanks, I really enjoyed meeting you. If there's, I mean, your father and I did that. I, can't, I can't even think how many years ago it's been. Um, probably <laughs> before you were born, no. <laughs> so but your father and I met, oh my God, I can't. Maybe over 10? Over a decade. Yeah, well yeah. over that. Yeah. I mean, because you guys Easily. were just getting into karate or taekwondo back then. Yeah. So yeah. it was neat. So that was a long time ago. Yeah. And look at the relationship your father and I have developed. I've developed. I come to Seattle. He's the first one there. What do you yeah. need? Yeah. Let me help you. He came to the Skylum studio. Help set it up. Yeah. Um, you know, I need something. He's there to pack it. Do whatever. We bounce ideas off each other constantly. Uh, not to mention your father's survival skills, <laughs> helping me out. So right. <laughs> uh, you, you build long life connections. Absolutely. So, yeah. But hey, thank you so much. No worries. Appreciate it. It was a pleasure and an honor. Yeah. Well, I'm Benelli. Thanks for watching. And if you want to, if you're listening to this on a podcast, head over to YouTube, the Photo Focus YouTube channel, and you can actually watch and see Greg's pretty face. So this is something new we're, we're working with, trying to incorporate both video and audio podcasting. And um, just let us know in the comments below if you like the video with the podcast or if you just like the podcasting because I know a lot of people listen to it yeah, while well, driving in their car. Exactly, yeah. So your choice. But let us know in the comments below. And I appreciate, once again, listening and watching. I'm Videli. Thank you. You are listening to the In Focus Interview Show. If you like these interviews, be sure to subscribe to our weekly Photo Focus podcast on photofocus.com. Thank you for joining us.